Hi, I'm Andrea Kaobata, and I work for the University of Hawaii's College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources Cooperative Extension Service. I'm an extension agent serving Hawaii's coffee industry statewide, as well as orchard crop growers in West Hawaii. Today, I'll be providing an update on our Catamore Hybrid Coffee Leaf Rust Resistant Coffee Project here at the UH CTAR Kona Research Station in Kealakekua. During this presentation, I'll share about the basic history of coffee leaf rust resistant trees at the Kona Research Station and our project to determine coffee quality and suitability for Hawaii's coffee industry. I'll share our harvest and cupping results from the 2021 to 2022 season and harvest and blind tasting results from the 2022 to 2023 season. Then I'll provide some insight into my attempts to replicate our Catamore hybrid trees and to graft cyan onto Liberica rootstock. Lastly, I'll discuss our continued plans for the 2023 season. Since 2021, myself, Matt and Nick at the Kona Research Station in Kainaliu have been maintaining a small field of Catamore hybrid selections that were brought in by Dr. Phil Ito in the 1980s. These trees, which were planted around 1987, were originally propagated for a USAID project with Southeast Asia as a replacement crop for opium growers. While catamars are typically not known to have a good cup quality, from what I understand, the trees that remain at the station are the result of a cupping conducted by Dr. Kathy Cavalletto of UH CTAR. From this cupping, they selected the best trees for continued cultivation. In October 2021, Dr. Tracy Matsumoto of USDA ARSP Bark and I collected leaf samples from our catamar field trees. These samples were submitted to Dr. Dapang Zhang, a research geneticist at the USDA ARS in Beltsville, Maryland, who identified 15 of our trees as catamore hybrids, two as sarchamore hybrids, and three as a cross between a specific Timor hybrid and Katura known as T8667. In general, catamores are a cross between a Timor hybrid and Katura. The Timor hybrid was a result of a spontaneous cross between Caffea arabica and Caffea conifera, also known as robusta, from which these trees obtained their resistance to CLR. Sarchamar hybrids are a cross between the Timor hybrid and a Costa Rican Vela sarchi. In Central America, T8667 is an important plant for their coffee leaf rust plant breeding program. The T stands for the district in which the Cartier Research Station is located at in Costa Rica, and the numbers represent the accession or tree number. This tree diagram shows where varieties like Typica and Bourbon follow a path stemming from their eugenoides background, and the Catamores, which follow a different path from the Conifera background. In our collection, we have a total of 20 trees that are showing resistance to CLR. Out of these 20 trees, you will notice that some of the trees have the same selection name. For example, trees 1, 2, 3, and 5 are replicates of the same selection. Trees 11 and 12 are replicates of an unidentified catamore. And trees 18, 19, and 20 are also replicates of the same selection. This leaves us with a total of just 10 different selections in the field. Our collection of harvest data on 20 individual trees began during the 2021 to 2022 season. I harvested ripe cherry every two weeks from 17 of the 20 trees that were producing coffee. Between September 21 and January of 2022, each tree was individually harvested as cherry became fully ripe on their single productive vertical. Random ripe cherries were counted and weighed to get an average berry weight across the season. Per individual tree, each harvest was weighed, hand pulped, fermented in water overnight, and then sun dried and vacuum sealed. Any odd observations were also noted. Over the course of the 2021 to 2022 season, a handful of trees stood out as having relatively large cherry compared to the average Conotypica cherry grown on first year production trees at the Kona Research Station. These trees also stood out for a single vertical total yield that was relatively higher than other trees in the field. This table ranks the top seven trees for average cherry weight and then for total yield. Since trees one, two, and three are replicates of the same selection, and trees 15 and 16 are also replicates of another selection, the top four trees that I selected to advance to the cupping were trees two, four, six, and 15. My criteria for advancing coffees to the cupping stage 
included cherry weight, which might indicate large green bean, and high yield, while also calling out selections that may have had harvest and or processing issues, such as trees with a high level of floater or hollow parchment, as was noticed about tree 11 and 12. While these trees had relatively large cherry and high yield, during the peak of harvest, more than 25% of the parchment were floaters, indicating a lower green bean recovery rate compared to other selections. On March 15 of 2022, Greenwell Farms hosted a cupping of four of the season's top-ranking Cattlemore hybrid coffees. The Q grade cuppers included Chai Neo and Jennifer Greenwell of Greenwell Farms, Brittany Horn and Madeline Longoria Garcia of Pacific Coffee Research, and Dr. Tracy Matsumoto of USDA ARSP Bark. I'm additionally grateful to Chai, who hauled, sorted, and roasted the coffee for the cupping. She also helped to collate the results and coffee descriptors from the cupper's score sheets. Cattlemore hybrid trees number 2, 4, 6, and 15, as well as a Kona Typica for comparison, was blind cupped that day. Compared to Kona Typica, the Cattlemore hybrid trees number 2, 4, and 6 are dwarf in stature with green leaf tips, and tree 15 is dwarf with dark bronze leaf tips. Relative to an average Kona Typica cherry that weighs 2.04 grams, the Cattlemores had medium to large cherry. And relative to a farm producing 10,000 pounds of cherry per acre, the Cattlemores had medium to high yield in the 2021 to 2022 season. But most exciting were the cup scores from the March 15 cupping. All of the coffees exceeded the minimum of an 80 point score for specialty coffee. Three of the Cattlemore hybrids score higher than the Kona Typica on the table, and Tree 4 had the highest average score of 84 points. Descriptors of Tree 4's cup profile are listed below the table, which includes citrus, chocolate, and caramel notes, and juicy body, among other characteristics. This past season, I monitored all 20 trees for CLR resistance, which they continue to maintain, kept them on the same spray schedule as our Typica trees, and again harvested cherry from the individual trees to confirm cherry yields and size and cup quality. Not all trees produced cherry in the 21 to 22 season, and some did not produce enough cherry to determine average berry size and tree yield. So I also wanted to see how those trees did this season to determine if they should also be considered for cupping analysis. This past season's harvest spanned from August to January for most of the trees. And on average, there was one second year production vertical and two first year production verticals per tree. These were the top seven trees ranked for the large average cherry weight and high yield, which is quite impressive compared to Konak Typica cherry and yields of trees with two second year producing verticals grown at the Kona Research Station, pre-CLR and noted under the chart. You might also notice similar tree numbers as was seen on the 2021 data table about four slides back. Again, trees one, two, and three are replicates and trees six and seven are replicates of the same selection names. Some of our observations from this past crop were related to pruning and the weather. Late desuckering of the young verticals in 2021 and a heavy crop caused us to have to stake nearly all of the first year production verticals with bamboo in 2022 so that the branches didn't break. We also ended up having to harvest with benches as we didn't want to pull the second year verticals during harvest and risk breaking the branches when trying to bend them. Still, nearly all of the Cattlemore and Sartrema hybrid trees in this field are considered dwarf trees, especially when compared to the height potential of other varieties like Typica and Bourbon. On five occasions during the peak of harvest from late September through late November, heavy rain of at least three quarters of an inch fell over a 24 hour period, causing cherries to crack as a result of water saturation in the cherry skin cells of fully ripe fruit. These rain events may have inflated our average cherry weights and overall yield slightly in the second year. This past season, the trees produced enough coffee to conduct a blind tasting which was held during the Kona Coffee Farmers Association Conference in late February. The coffee used for this tasting were all grown at the Kona Research Station Kanaliu and cultivated with similar fertilizer and CLR spray programs. We are thankful to Chai Neo of Greenwell Farms for roasting this coffee for us. We served the coffee as pour-overs, brewed in the same method for each sample, and had 62 participants for the blind tasting. While we would have loved to have known more about the participants' background, 
We kept things simple and asked tasters to select their favorite out of three choices. Coffee A was a Quanatypica grafted onto Cafea Liberica rootstock, and these trees are CLR susceptible. Only ripe cherry were pulped, fermented overnight, washed, and then dried. Coffee B was a mix of color break to ripe cherry from a combination of about 15 Catamore hybrid trees. These trees are CLR resistant. The cherry were pulped and honey processed and then dried. They were not fermented or washed. Coffee C was a mix of ripe cherry only from two specific Catamore hybrid trees that previously cupped well in March of 2022. These trees are CLR resistant. The cherry were pulped, fermented overnight, washed and then dried. Once hulled, the green beans were hand sorted with a size 16 screen and physical defects such as CBB damaged, shriveled, cracked, shells, and discolored beans were removed. Overall, nearly 40% of people selected Coffee C, a mix of Tree 4 and Tree 15 Catamore hybrids as their favorite. About 30% of tasters selected Coffee A, the Kona Typica, as their favorite. And a little more than 27% of participants participants selected coffee B, the mix of honey processed Catamore hybrids as their favorite. From the data and observations collected over the past two seasons, I've selected our six consistently top ranking trees for yield and average cherry size. Total yield over two years of harvest ranged from nearly 26 pounds per tree to over 47 pounds per tree. These yields are up and up with the 30.2 pound average of pre-CLR two-year total yields from Conotypica grafted trees also grown at the Kona Research Station. Vertical age, the amount of coffee produced, variety or selection, and weather can play an important role in cherry size and weight as we see in the variation from year one to year two. However, overall, average cherry sizes are similar or larger when compared to the average weight of a pre-CLR Conotypica cherry. The cupping scores from the 2021 to 2022 harvest are displayed in the last column and Greenwell Farms will again graciously host the cupping this April of coffee from this past season's harvest. In January 2023, leaf samples were sent to Dr. Lisa Keith and Blaine Louise of USDA ARS PBARC for coffee leaf rust resistant screening assays of nine trees including our top six trees and a Katua E Rojo control. Katua E. Rojo is not resistant to CLR, and we see this on our tree that's growing in the same field as the Catamore hybrids. Dr. Keith's lab tested a total of 48 discs taken from six leaves of each tree, and these discs were inoculated with rust and placed in a growth chamber. Four weeks after inoculation, the control discs developed yellow chlorotic infections and CLR spores. On the other hand, after four weeks, Mild to moderate chlorotic infections developed on the leaf discs, but no sporulation occurred on any of the Catamore hybrids tested, thereby confirming they're resistant to CLR race 24. In 2021, I started grafting our Catamore hybrids onto Liberica rootstock. As some of the selections had only one tree remaining in the field, I wanted to make sure that we had replicates in case the original tree got sick and died. In my attempts to replicate the mother trees, I've trialed several different methods to try and improve my grafting success rate. So far, I've found that by using vertical suckers from the stump, I can graft onto younger Liberica rootstock seedlings because the cyan diameter is smaller than tips from older verticals. As a result, trees can be planted in the field sooner. I've grafted with the tip plus one node, as well as one node cuttings with all laterals and leaves removed. I've used parafilm to wrap the cyan and electrical tape to fuse the rootstock and cyan together, and have had success using a splice graft, which is one of the simplest methods of grafting. I've also found that retaining two or more leaves on the rootstock improved my grafting success rates. While the mist chamber is typically re recommended post grafting, I've used our existing overhead irrigation and the wrapping of cyan with parafilm as a way of reducing transpiration and water loss from the cyan. If a graft is not successful, the cyan typically turns brown and dies within a month. After a couple of months and with the emergence of new leaves and growth, the parafilm and tape is carefully removed to prevent any type of growth restriction and to deter pests and disease issues. About six months after initial grafting, the trees were ready to be planted in the field. 
Thanks to the efforts of the Hawaii Agricultural Research Center, the Hawaii Coffee Growers Association, Green Wolf Farms, USDA, as well as Nick and Matt, we increased the number of coffee leaf rust resistant trees at the station and now have false tupi and obata in addition to our catamore and sarchamore hybrids. We've also increased the number of mother plants of our top catamore hybrid trees by up to five times by grafting and establishing these trees in the field. On August 1st, 2022, in an attempt to save genetic material from two catamore hybrid trees that had been dug up and left to die by our neighbors, I was able to try my hand at field grafting onto rootstock suckers arising from the stump of a grafted tree that had been in the ground for 20 plus years. I followed similar methods as I had used to graft catamores in the greenhouse using a splice graft, leaving at least two leaves on the rootstock sucker, wrapping the sign with parafilm, and sealing the graft with electrical tape. Within about two months, healthy new growth could be seen on the cyan. At this point, all of the verticals, leaves, and suckers on the tree were pruned off and removed to provide more sunlight and direct the plant's energy to the grafts. In early December, the tape and parafilm were removed. In mid-February, I removed the top section of the stump to reduce suckering and to allow more room for the grafts to grow. One of the main things I learned from this ex exercise is that with field grafting, you need to graft as low to the base of the rootstock sucker or rootstock tree as possible. Imagine that you have a field crew pruning trees and they are instructed to prune verticals between 18 and 24 inches above the ground. Well, these grafts were made about 20 inches above the ground. If the crew didn't know any better, these catamore grafts would have been cut right off during pruning, leaving just the rootstock and any typical growth coming from the stump, and there went your CLR resistant variety. Some of our next steps include determining nematode tolerance of our catamore hybrids at the Kona Research Station. This month, Dr. Roxana Myers of USDA ARS PBARC will be analyzing root and soil samples from the catamore field to help us confirm presence or absence of Melodegyne conaensis or the coffee root not nematode. The results might at least help us explain the health and productivity of the trees and to initially see if the trees may have tolerance or resistance to the coffee root not nematode. We hope to also have our catamore seedlings lab tested for resistance or tolerance to this particular root pest. On April 4, Greenwell Farms will be hosting a second year of cupping for our top catamore hybrid trees. We look forward to sharing the results of this cupping with you. Please look out for a survey that I'll be sending out to the industry to determine interest from growers regarding the receipt of catamore hybrid plant materials. I also plan on continuing to graft catamore scions onto Liberica rootstocks and to build up our inventory of trees in the station's demo field. And finally, our harvest will run from July to January. If there is interest, coffee from this year's harvest may be distributed to farmers on a limited basis, though at this time I cannot give any guarantees. I'd like to give a big thanks to Nick Yamauchi Matt Miyahira, Dr. Stuart T. Nakamoto, and Mike Moody for their help with this project both in and out of the field. I'd also like to thank our current funding support and partners who provide us with the resources and expertise to conduct our extension program throughout the state and to conduct projects such as this one at the Kona Research Station. If you have any questions about our project, please feel free to email, mail, call, or text me. Please also visit our hawaiicoffeeed.com website for additional coffee and coffee leaf rust information. Thank you.